So to give you an idea, about two blocks away from my house, there are these woods that run behind the houses. But it's not the house's backyards. It's like behind a fence that runs behind the houses. So in these woods, me and my friends would go out there and we would chop down trees, collect the sticks and logs, and build onto a fort we were making. So just last November, me and my three friends went out there around 11 at night, and we were just doing the same old, same old. Me and friend A were building a fort, and friend C and D were collecting wood for us. So eventually, at one point, when C and D went out, they never came back. Me and A thinking it was them, trying to scare us, we just ignored it. But then about 10 minutes into being gone, about 10 yards away, we saw a figure dash really quickly behind the trees towards the exit. So me and A figured it was them, not realizing it was one person. And after growing bored about 10 minutes, we left and headed back to my house. But at the same time, we were texting and calling C and D, but they weren't answering. So 30 minutes pass and we go worried when C and D burst through the front door panic. Here is what they saw. When C and D left the last time before they went missing, they went to the far back of the woods opposite of where the exit was. When they got there, they looked in our direction where we would have been. And when they did, they saw the silhouette of some hooded figure looking in me and A's direction. So they fled along the back of the woods until they ended up on a street. So in the time of them being gone, they were running around trying to find my house in the pitch black and the dead of the night. But it gets weirder. So I'll name off the other strange details. When C and D looked in our direction when they saw the figure, they did not see our flashlights or hear us talking at all. In the direction C and D fled, it did not match the path the other figure me and A saw run towards the exit. When C and D would have already been gone, me and A heard tons of footsteps around the leaves. The time they were gone from my house did not match the short time they said they were gone from their perspective. This happened just around a year after my father and I had been in our current neighborhood. We don't get too much crime here compared to our previous location. It was a dry summer's night and my sisters were doing their nightly hour-long jump on our large trampoline. From our backyard trampoline, you can see a church and its parking lot that is cut off by a road directly by our neighborhood boundary walls. One of my sisters comes in to tell me something that she said was creeping them out. Come outside. There's this man on the church roof just sitting there. I wasn't really faced by this at first because I thought that the man simply was doing some type of work on the church's exterior. With the initial conclusion, I got onto our trampoline to get a view of him and was immediately perplexed at what I was lying my eyes on. My sisters were right. There was for sure a man on the church roof, but he wasn't sitting anymore. It didn't take no more than a minute for me to question my own theory and become slightly scared. I then realized that there was no way that he could be working on the church exterior because along with the single working street light and it almost being midnight, it would be unsafe to do construction with no one else on the roof to help. The second I realized this, my brain switched to anxiety mode and my body ran ice cold. I asked my sisters why. They weren't inside because he could be a danger to himself and others and they couldn't really answer me. They just kept intensely observing the man. I didn't want to leave them out there alone so I observed the man with them for as long as I could. He was an average sized young looking white man with casual clothes on. He had no tools, no ladder to get off the roof, and there was no car in the parking lot or near the church. So it seemed as though he had walked there. Most of the time, he was sitting or standing up in the mannequin-like stillness I had never seen in real life. When he wasn't doing these things, he would slowly pace and randomly stop to peek into the front church window and abruptly vanish from view. I think I'm gonna call the cops, my sister whispered. At this point, it had been 30 minutes and I was ready to either call for help or go inside because honestly, I was terrified. So many different questions were running through my head. He was trying to break into the church. Was he trying to end his life? Was he on drugs? 
After about 40 minutes of staring in a million plausible theories, I think he heard or saw our whole family who were in the backyard witnessing the whole ordeal and he vanished for good. We never called the cops because we cooked it to simply beat a weird guy on a roof. And that was the end of it for us anyway. I wonder what he is actually doing on that church roof and I hope they were just making a mountain out of an anthill. Cautionary tale about giving strangers rides ahead. About 10 years ago, I was on my way to work and made my usual stop at the Speedway to grab a Red Bull. I made the stop about every day, so it was routine for me. On this day, however, I was already about 15 minutes late for work, but whipped into the gas station anyway. As I got there was a clearly strung out girl pacing by the entrance with a baby stroller. I assumed this lady was going to approach me when I got out of the car to ask me for money to buy food. Midwest is filled with dope heads. So I braced myself for the awkward encounter and headed in. What happened instead is a lady bolted in front of me with her flip phone and stroller in hand and started begging me for a ride up the road. I declined initially, but she would not fuck off. I get past her, buy my Red Bull, and head to my car. As I get to my car, she reappears from behind my car and starts begging again. This time, she flashes a photo of her baby on her phone and tells me she just needs dropped off up the road. Fuck it. I'm already late for work. She hops in the back seat with her now clearly empty stroller and instructs me to drive towards the bypass close to my work. As we drive, she keeps telling me to just go straight every time I ask how much further it is. We're now well away from the city, and it's all country roads. I lose my patience, and I firmly tell her she needs to either give me an address or get out of my car. She throws three dollars in my passenger seat and begs me just to turn onto this random gravel road. I turn down it and notice the only thing on the road is a beat-up Corsica blocking half the gravel path. I instantly pull off the side and tell her to get the fuck out. She begs just to take her down to the course cup because it's her boyfriend and he has her kid. I tell her if that's true, then he can drive down the road to pick her up. She texts on her phone for a second and without another word, just hops out. I'm officially sketched out and flip a bitch just to see in the rear view the course cup hauling ass behind me. Lady is gone and turning onto the bypass opposite of me. Ended up calling in since I was running about 30 minutes late after everything. My grammar is trash, but I'm 100% certain I was about to get robbed by crackheads or worse. Between the fake baby photo, empty stroller, and shady dirt road Corsica, I was pretty shook for a good week. It happened when I was around 8 or 9 years old, and I was going to the school that far away from my house. The only way to get there was to get a bus. The ride would take about 40 to 50 minutes because of traffic jams. I was the only person from my class riding this bus, so I was most likely going to the bus stop alone. Very rarely my best friend went with me. I think it was the beginning of winter. There was no snow, but it was windy. One day after school, some friends came with me and my best friend to the nearest playground. At some point, we saw a really strange tall man sitting on a bench far away from other people, smiling widely and looking at playing kids. My friends told me that this was a pedophile known for coming to this playground and watching kids. I marked it in quotes because I don't know if it's true. I've never heard anything about this guy in the news, though I once had, though I once had a talk in my class about a strange man in the neighborhood. I started to feel really uneasy, so my friends and I just said, we need to go now and ran away. Back then I got scared really easily, but it was still a dumb idea. To the bus stop. When we were already far away, I turned around and saw that the man had stood up and walked in our direction, looking me right in the eyes. When we got there, I felt very weird. There weren't much people. Normally, there were tons of teenagers wanting to get home really fast, and my bus wasn't there, so I decided to get into another one that would take me to my grandmother's house. The bus was empty. Even the driver went to get something to eat because the bus would go in about 10 minutes. When we walked into the bus, just to sit and talk, I saw a man that wasn't there before, 
eating something and looking at us. He was not the same man that was at the playground. I cannot explain this, but from the beginning, he looked very strange. My friend just sat down and told me to focus on our talk, and so I did, trying not to be scared by this weird man. At one point, I saw that he came into the bus and sat directly in front of us, about three meters from us. Then he started talking, but I tried not to listen to him, get calm and just talk with my friend. But then suddenly, I looked at him and he was staring at me with a big smile and very loudly said, In a moment, you'll be in heaven. Needless to say, we were both scared and quickly left the bus. I don't remember the rest from this day. I've never seen or heard from this man again, but for some time, I was really scared to get onto the bus alone.